In today's news, DeAndre Donovan charged with firearm possession and government moves to reappoint trust fund board members who were wrongfully and illegally revoked and eight suspected cases of hand, foot and mouth disease reported in the BVI. And a greater focus on the true meaning of emancipation during festival period is needed. But viewers, these and more stories when 284 News return. Yo, everything good, Dad? Bye. This thing got me one way, Daddy. What do you mean? Ever since I hook up with this thing, I can't eat, I can't sleep. This is the first thing I touch it when I reach home. What do you mean? Hey, this thing like you, you know? Dad, this thing got me staying home, keeping out of trouble me. Wow. What's your name is? She? I talk about my CCT life. Don't worry about missing your favorite series, sports, news, and local programming. Come to CCT today and sign up for CCT Live to access over 80 channels. CCT Live, bring it home. One month free trial, turn into five. Five months turn into well. You know I huff. I watch him bar. I even watch him football. Dad, Nickelodeon, Paw Patrol. I am hook. Hook, I tell you. Welcome viewers to the Thursday, August 18th edition of 284 News. I am Kamal Haynes, bringing you the latest out of the British Virgin Islands. I want to thank you guys so much for joining us. Well, we start today's newscast with an update from the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force, where police charge a 22-year-old man with having a prohibited weapon and ammunition after a search of his residence early yesterday, which uncovered the illegal items. Well, DeAndre Donovan of Carrot Bay will appear in Magistrate's Court to face the offences of possession of a prohibited weapon and unlawful possession of ammunition at the next available sitting. Well, during a search warrant executed on his Carrot Bay resident, uh, officers found a semi-automatic rifle along with five rounds of ammunition. Well, Commissioner of Police Mark Collins noted that this find is the latest in a series of firearm seizures by his officers in the last six months. Well, he said on a quote, my officers have so far recovered 28 firearms for the year, including prohibited firearms and close to 500 rounds of ammunition. But those tasks with identifying persons and seizing illegal weapons have been relentless in right raiding the streets of these firearms that have unfortunately caused too many lives. I commend their presence." End quote. Well, the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force continues to seek the public's help in identifying persons who are in possession of illegal weapons. Well, persons can contact the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force Intelligence Unit directly at 368-9339. All information they said will be held in the strictest of confidence. But moving on viewers, we are Minister for Natural Resources, Honorable Melvin Mitch Turnbull has detailed the government's intentions to re-establish the Board of the Virgin Islands Climate Change Trust Fund, which was wrongfully revoked in 2019. But while issuing a public apology to the members affected by this move, Minister Turnbull said his government plans on righting the wrongs which have hindered the progress of the trust fund, adding, it is their hope to put the trust fund back on a path to success. The board was highly energized. All members were qualified, hardworking, committed, passionate, and high performing. The revocation of their appointments was not only counterproductive, it was just simply wrong and it was unlawful. It is now incumbent on me as Minister for Natural Resources, with whom the responsibility of climate change now lies, to offer my sincere apology on behalf of the Government of the Virgin Islands to each and every member who I have called individually from this Climate Change Trust Fund, who was duly appointed and serving which your membership was rock fully revoked on April 24th, 2019. I want to call them by name, the Chairman, Mr. Edward Childs, representing any sector responsible for making contributions to the fund, Deputy Chairman, Mr. John Klein, representing the tourism sector, Dr. Catherine Spain Smith, representing an academic or research organization, Dr. Shannon Gore, representing a non-governmental organization or community-based organization, Ms. Shelley Bend, representing the financial services sector, and Mr. Robert, Ronnie Letsom, representing an individual ordinarily, ordinarily resident in the territory. 
Well, Turnbull noted that in their short time serving on the board, the members went above and beyond in their service and in some cases went as far as donating their own money for the trust's use due to the absence of seeding fund. What their revocation, uh, uh, he said, plunged the trust into an immediate phase of dormancy. The decision of April 24, 2019 immediately halted the urgent and critical work that was completed by the trust fund and it remained dormant for over three years. So we find ourselves in an unfortunate position, set back over the years. As the commissioner summarized in his report, any momentum that the board had made in obtaining international funding, or indeed any funding at all, has been lost. A great disservice has been done to the people of this territory and a great wrong to the members who serve faithfully on the trust fund board with the highest levels of commitment enthusiasm and integrity. Although admitting that the decision of the then administration to revoke the board's membership was not in line with the law, Turnbull said that the move was part of a plan that was intended to move the trust fund into the next phase of progress. Following the process outlined in the act, the first board of trustees was appointed in 2017 of July. On the 24th of April 2019, as a part of its blanket policy to revoke and reconstitute membership of all statutory boards, Cabinet of the Virgin Islands at the time decided to revoke the membership of all non-government members of the Virgin Islands Climate Change Trust Fund Board. This decision was in direct contradiction to the law, which is Section 16 of the Virgin Islands Climate Change Trust Fund Act. As advised by the Attorney General of the day and substantiated by the Commission of Inquiry Report, it is important that I highlight the Cabinet's decision came at a critical stage in the life of the Climate Change Trust Fund, transitioning it from a legal entity merely on paper to a functional entity achieving its objectives just prior to the elections of 2019. The former administration had substantially paved the way for the Trust Fund to access a portion of environmental and tourism levy as seed funding to support its enactment. On the heels of this milestone, at their meetings in 2019, the board discussions focused around the final, finalization of a budget for the 2019-2020 year and hiring of key staff positions, including a chief executive officer, to begin the process of bringing the trust fund to its life. While well, these moves were un ultimately intended to better equip the entity to perform its purpose, a purpose which he, the minister said was imperative to the territory's ongoing transition into energy independence and security through large-scale transitions to green and renewable energy and its adaptation and response to the effects of climate change. The resources pooled in the Climate Change Trust Fund can support investment in schools, health facilities, ports, roads, other infrastructure and facilities that are hurricane and flood resilient. It opens room for innovative opportunities like financing programs for home and business owners to make their own properties resilient. This trust fund is the best hope for protecting our low-lying coastal communities from sea level rising stronger from storm surge by restoring and protecting our coral reefs and mangroves. While well, tying the great significance of the Virgin Islands Climate Change Trust Fund to the urgent need to re-establish the Trust Fund Board, the minister invited the members whose appointment was revoked to return to serve again with a reset of their terms of appointment. Well, Turnbull said that he is hopeful of all the members being willing and able to serve again, but should this not be the case, any vacancies will be filled by way of the open, transparent public process outlined in the Act. Well, up next, viewers, eight suspected cases of hand, foot and mouth disease reported in the BVI and the greater focus on the true meaning of emancipation during festival period is needed. We get to these stories when Twit for News return. You value traditions. To You value music. You value education. Family. I love you. <laughs> Service. Thank you. You're welcome. Love. Life. At Popular, we're committed to you and everything our community values. For the things you value the most, count on us. Popular. 
so you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it will read his mind. There's the answer, come. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. Um, no, no, babe. I'm actually watching the news right now. Take, take, take a listen. Topping our newscast today, UFOs seen around Tortola Pier Park. And District 3 residents outraged over no water supply. They simply cannot bathe. These and more stories when 284 News returns. All right, babe. Just get some rest. Take two Advil and I'll see you later. Bye. Okay, honey. i see you later. I love you. It's clear to see that Coconut Lounge is a place to be, the coolest cocktail lounge in the British Virgin Islands. A lounge like no other, with welcoming, professional service, and a breathtaking ambiance. Not forgetting a diverse selection of wines, beers, and signature cocktails. Cozy, comfortable, contemporary. Coconut Lounge at Tortola Pier Park. Visit us today. Welcome back, viewers. Well, hand, foot, and mouth disease has seemingly reemerged in the territory following the detection of eight suspected cases by the Environmental Health Division. Well, according to a media release on Wednesday, August 17th, the suspected cases have prompted the EHD to heighten their surveillance of early childhood centres across the British Virgin Islands. Well, speaking on the incident, Chief Environmental Health Officer Mr. Lionel Michael listed some of the early symptoms of the disease and the poor practices which have led to the resurgence of the disease. So two of the factors that we see contributing to the problem is one, poor personal hygiene, and two, <clears throat> poor cleaning and disinfection procedures. Um, people not cleaning enough, they're not cleaning thoroughly, and so on, using the proper compounds. Then another fact is overcrowding. Um, some daycares and early childhood because of the demand and the economy and the society that people have to work and, and, do, and do their jobs, they have to take their children to daycares. And so um, we have a, we have a, um, some gateways are overcrowded, and that can lead to easy transmission of the disease because it's a, it's a viral disease. Um, it can it can be transmitted easily um, between 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 in between um, children. Another factor is that the is the whole question of sick policy from both parents and and school. If your child is sick. So symptoms of fever, headache, and the, and the rashes and child's skin and so on. Then we are saying to you, do not send the child to school and so on. Um, and, 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 and parents should look out for these symptoms. Um, um, when they go to school, the, the school should, the, the daycare should look out for these symptoms. And if children are sick, we don't take them in, in, in the school. Uh, if children develop in less wilder school, then they should have a sick, um, a sick area, or we call it a sick bay, to put these children. So, so these are the main factors that contribute into the spread. Um, poor personal hygiene, poor clean and disinfection, overcrowding, and non-adherence to the sick policy. Well, Michael also issued numerous recommendations that parents and teachers can utilize to help curb the spread of the disease. We, we, we have been to COVID and we know we wash our hands meticulously and thoroughly during COVID that we want to continue with that whole hand washing procedure to hand washing practice and to prevent these diseases. Because we know hand washing prevent a multitude of diseases, right? Uh, bacterial, viral, and parasitical diseases and so on. So we need to continue to wash our hands in a proper manner for twenty seconds, we rub it together, use um use um soap and water, water one over your hands in the daycare. And sanitizers can also be used with a 60% alcohol base. We also tell them about cleaning and disinfection. Clean the surfaces that children come in contact with. Right? Clean the cribs, clean the cots, clean the linen, and so on. Clean the toys. And parents should do the same in their home also. It's important to, that, that you, you practice good hygienic practices in the home and then carry that over to the schools and vice versa. 
Well, the Chief Environmental Health Officer also spoke about a biannual teacher's training for all early childhood professionals that are conducted by the Environmental Health Division in collaboration with the Ministry of Education to help prevent the spread of infectious diseases. Well, this is held twice per year, and this is what and, um, we equip the teachers. They are, they, they are the teachers, they are qualified, trained, professional people need now to teach. Basically, we give them the information and, and, and with the expectation, with the high expectation, and some of them have been doing it, to pass on this kind of knowledge to um, to the children. Um, but yes, there are some instances where uh, we still find in these institutions that um, they, they, they have challenges in, 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 in complying and, and practicing certain measures. One of the, one of the things we observe also is that um, is the supplies that are needed in schools and daycares and so on to ensure good good hygiene practices and soap, paper disposable towels, um, water and so on. And these are not these don't come cheap um, for the amount of students you have. And they um, um and so therefore there's a there's, there's we're calling upon them to increase these supplies in schools around this time, um, so that children can um, children can have easy access and, and, and in have a, a very readily available supply of these um of these supplies to carry out hygienic and cleaning practices. Well Michael reiterated that hand foot and mouth disease is preventable, providing that residents practice the measures on a consistent and thorough basis. Well, moving on, viewers, we're on the heels of the August Emancipation Festival. Director of Culture Dr. Catherine Smith believes this period of observation should include a greater focus on the true meaning of emancipation in the BVI and the journey of the ancestors throughout that process. Dr. Smith was responding to questions raised on the latest edition of Honestly Speaking with Claude Skelton Klein as she shared uh, historical information in response to specific questions posed by Mr. Klein on certain aspects on Virgin Islands history during the plantation era. So it, it really is not anything to be taken lightly, that mm. history and that era in our, yeah. our heritage. Yes. And so there, there ought to be a real celebration of it and also a real kind of understanding of yes. the meaningfulness of uh, it. Well, as the month of August continues, Dr. Smith is calling for more discourse and education on the process of emancipation in the British Virgin Islands. Although she did note that the festival period is, as clearly named, a festival, she believes there is room for improvement in ensuring that the event celebrates things that are directly related to the emancipation period. And since we are in this period of August and particularly came out of Emancipation Festival, these are the sorts of things that we need to know during Emancipation Festival. Yes. I mean, it is a festival, of course, but and the event being celebrated is Emancipation. Education um, should be a greater component. Or celebration as well. There yes. can be many celebratory things that are directly related to. Yes. Um, and so with that, um, women, what, what kind of avenues did they pursue? during that whole period in the Virgin Islands. And they had avenues that would for, for, to better their lives that were particular to their situation as female. And one of those um, would be to have children and reproduce with planters. Mm. So this and, was a, this was part of a strategy for yeah, freedom. Yes, it would have been, and there were many strategies. This is just one, one of, okay. just one of. And Dr. Smith does detail, if you read his work, you'll see that he details the many different things such as, you know, okay, they might get that, freedom for their children and turn around and buy their other relatives freedom. There were so many strategies, of mm. course, because no one wanted to be in the situation. Mm. Um, so we have many kind of interesting, you know, triumphant or really, you know, liberating or, you know, situations that show agency on the part of our ancestors during that period, many mm. here in the Virgin Islands. Well, in response to a question posed by Klein, the Director of Culture went on to explain some of the well-documented and, I quote, strategies of freedom utilized by the enslaved women of the Virgin Islands in order to gain freedom for themselves and their children. Well, one of these strategies, she explained, was the bearing of children to white male planters, who at the time stood at the high end of the power dynamic. Well, a well-documented case of this occurring in the territory has been identified within the will of George Martin. And so one would have been to reproduce with um, the planter, and in this case it was George Martin who owned plantation, the, you know, the plantation at Joe's Hill Estate, and I think he also owned one in Bruce Bay. Mm -hmm. And um, 
from my last count, I'm thinking I'm remembering 10 women with 20 children now. Mm. We count again, that's a uh, more or less, t give or take. Right. And so it's very obvious what was going on. And so because the children would, would had a greater likelihood of freedom mm. and then inheriting property on the, on the part of the, the, the white planter. One of our greatest female heroes, Perrine Georges, she was the daughter of a, a white planter. Well, Smith noted that the process of exploring all of the documentation on the spirit is still ongoing. Well, currently, it is believed that one of the territory's female heroes, Perrine Georges, would have been born in this type of union. But Dr. Smith lamented that where the documentation process fails is differentiating which of these births would have resulted from consensual relationships and which would have been the product of coercion or rape. Um, she added that the power dynamic at the time supports the belief that some of these interactions would have been forced. While well, chiming in, host Claude Scatlin Klein stressed that a proper understanding and grasp of what happened in the Virgin Islands in the past is the only way to make informed diagnosis on events and social behaviors of the day. Well, Dr. Smith was highlighting the upcoming launch of the book Boundless Childhood Joy Tales from In and Around the Garden by Arthur Marilyn Malone Bass. Of your words up next, BVI's Alton Bertie produces soca track for Bungie and Fayan on new Apple Home Sessions and BVI Film Commission to implement a registry for local film produ productions. Well, we get to those two stories after a word from our sponsors. There's a reason you get up on a morning. A reason you pick yourself up, start the day. Maybe it's sheer grit. Maybe it's your ethics. Maybe it's because you know people like you are waiting. For people just like you. We all have our reasons. And for Republic Bank, that reason is you. Every little thing. Every big thing. It's all about making a difference in your life. Because after 182 years, if it's one thing we're sure about, is that the difference is you. We're here to help. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Is business slow? Cash flow down? Hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284media at cctbvi.com. Advertising with us works. The beautiful Virgin Islands, or nature's little secret as some prefer, where the weather stays warm and the drinks stay cold, where men in wigs get their lawyer bills paid by governments and governments lose planes, where walls are built and prisoners escape. You vacation where we suffer. BVI love. Well, welcome back, viewers. Well, Faye Ann Leons and Bungie Garland are among a group of artists selected for the latest Apple Music Sessions. Well, the duo both contributed a four-track EP for the sessions, which were released on Monday, August 15th on Apple Music. Well, one of the featured songs, Island Vibe, was produced by Virgin Islander Alton Bertie. While well, speaking on the opportunity to work with a soca couple, producer Alton Bertie spoke about the experience. A few years ago, I was working on this track. It wasn't completed and Bungie Garland heard it. He immediately fell in love with it. And he was like, just send it to me one time, one time. And I told him it's not finished. He was like, just send the thing. So this has been something that has been brewing for a long time. However, recently I, they were contacted to do a special session for Apple, uh, Apple Music Home Sessions. And he decided he would use this track for that specific purpose. It is indeed an honor to be selected to do such. The project is in spatial audio, Dolby Atmos. Uh, you would hear the effects, 
when you're wearing like AirPods Pro or AirPods Max, it's kind of like a surround sound. Uh, when you move your head, the sound moves with you. So it gives you this live feel. So I am definitely honored to do this. And, you know, being able to work with Apple engineers and studio and, you know, just the whole project. I also mixed and mastered the project right here. This occurred during festival time. So I was busy running around doing gigs, sound checks, also training and working on this song at the same time. Well, viewers, the Apple Music Home Sessions version of the songs are exclusive to Apple Music for the next three months. But the full produced versions of these songs will also be going live, but they are only in stereo and will be across all digital streaming providers. Moving on, viewers, to our final story, where effective Tuesday, August 22nd, all locally registered film production businesses are encouraged to register their productions with the BVI Film Commission. What these productions include, but are not limited to, music videos, commercials, still photography, television shows, documentaries, etc. Well, BVI Film Commissioner Natalie Hodge had this to say. The BVI Film Commission is here to provide support as a local resource for advice and recommendations to our media professionals regarding other industry professionals, locations, and other support services when executing local productions. We also aim to ensure that local productions as well as incoming productions have equal opportunities to use our locations during their productions. Therefore, registering allows us to properly schedule use of our various locations without having multiple productions filming in the same location simultaneously. Our productions can be registered via the link Local Database Registry. Additionally, incoming productions to the BVI can access our Film Permit Application Guide via the link provided at BVI Film Permit Application Guide. While film production organizations should note that the Film Commission Office will always try not to intrude unnecessarily or to interrupt the production. However, the BVI Film Commission and or its representatives has the authority to visit any production that has been issued a BVI film permit with a reasonable notice to ensure the production is abiding by filming rules or regulations and laws of the territory. What the Film Commission say from, from further information and questions, please email them at info at bvifilm.com. Well, viewers, that's it for today's news roundup. Be sure to follow us for daily news updates at twit4media.com and like us on Facebook at twit4media and twit4bvi on Instagram and Twitter. I'm Kamal Haynes and I'll see you again tomorrow. Have a safe and enjoyable evening. Bye-bye. Yo, everything good, Dad? Bye. This thing got me one way, Daddy. What do you mean? Ever since I hook up with this thing, I can't eat, I can't sleep. This is the first thing I touch it when I reach home. What do you mean? Hey, this thing like you, you know? Dad, this thing got me staying home, keeping out that trouble me. What's your name is? She? I talk about my CCT life. Don't worry about missing your favorite series, sports, news, and local programming. Come to CCT today and sign up for CCT Live to access over 80 channels. CCT Live, bring it home. One month free trial, turn into five. Five months turn into well. <clears throat> you know I huff. I watch him bar. I even watch him football. Dad. Nickelodeon, Paw Patrol, I am Hook, Hook I tell you. It's okay, it's okay, I'll take care of it. What? No, no man, forget you. How may I assist you? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you want a top of power? Eh? You want a top of power? Eh? Join the prepaid party with CCT and enjoy more affordable data plans, more top-up promotions, more savings with hero bundles, and more value for your money each and every Tuesday with Top-Up Turn-Up Tuesday. Visit a CCT store today or anywhere CCT top-up is sold and top-up your phone. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, you want top-up or what? Eh?